right guys welcome back to another episode of M Crater lore so today what we're going to be working on is moving over basically the files that i worked on a separate workspace for kiln uh, i had to test a whole bunch of stuff uh, a couple days ago and i think it was more actually like last week but uh there was um a suggestion that was for basically building a kiln for the quicklime system and I decided to add uh, a whole bunch of uh, features to it as well so uh, we're going to be moving that into today uh, into our actual workspace from the second workspace I'll try to explain everything as uh, the video goes on basically right now what I'm doing is I am setting up the block properties uh, for the kiln. Now, basically how it will function is it will have an ID system, so we need MBT data, and um, all the blocks in that particular ID system that the um, structure is generated uh, will basically uh, be able to be removed specifically, not just a group area. So it's basically like a post-generation uh, ID system. Uh, but we needed to get the furnaces uh, built and then the main block and then finally the ladder block. The ladder block is uh, not actually designed for um, regular ladders and stuff. It's just designed for the kiln specifically. Uh, mainly because if you need to swap out the recipe on the inside of the kiln, uh, it would be very difficult to have to keep breaking and placing custom ladders. So I thought maybe having a built-in ladder system would probably be best for the kiln itself so it, it's easy, easily accessible to the thing. So I'm basically just setting up the properties for the ladder at the moment. I think it's the ladder, I'm pretty sure it is. But um, yeah, so the next thing I worked on was the GUI. So the screen, I basically called it a screen and we needed to set up the crafting resource uh, s slots. So these aren't actually slots that will be accessible by the player. Instead, it's going to get the blocks from the world uh, in according to the layers of blocks placed in the kiln. So basically, if these blocks are correct and the placed in the right order, uh, what will happen is it will be able to go ahead and um, create a, an output for the recipe so the output can only be taken it can't be placed in and I'm just adding some GUI features for this particular UI just to kind of decorate it a little bit more I wanted to make it so it looked like there was like some heat or something going to the um, output slot so basically something like that and then I added a icon to indicate if the the furnace is on or off as well. Uh, slot 9 is going to be our output and I decided to last minute to add a couple um, text for the inventory and kiln GUI just to kind of specify what it was. Uh, the next thing that I needed to do was add a bunch of tags. Uh, There's like I think two or three tags that I needed to add uh, for the uh, kiln blocks. The kiln blocks one is used for basically um, some of the mechanics in there. I can't remember exactly what it was for. It was a couple days ago when I moved things over. But the other one is the breaking thing. And basically what that will do is it will make sure that anything in that tag list is um, not going to be broken by the... or will, will prevent the furnace from being placed down. So it's really handy when making sure that players don't get through bedrock and stuff. All right, and then there is the default uh, permission when the block is placed. This is what I'm working on right now. This uh, sets the default uh, offset rotation. This is used in some of the other scripts uh, for um, getting the rotation of where the block needs to be placed. This is basically the subscript that uses it, and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Uh, basically, I'm using repeaters to paint out areas and build the the actual kiln itself um, in like a huge field so it happens all at once in one tick and basically what I'm doing now is I'm just setting up the tags that I added last added the call block and set the procedure to the generate um, 
part. I believe this one is for removing the kiln, if I remember correctly. So basically when you break it, it will automatically detect if that particular MBT um, group is in the same thing. And then it will basically destroy all the blocks in that group as well as give you back the kiln furnace. Uh, the blocks that are basically set up for the um, uh, furnace, like the ladder and the base block, are not uh, destructible. They're unbreakable, so that's really important. I believe right now I'm working on the right-click event. So basically what we needed to do was uh, create an event. So when we right-click on the block, it's going to set uh, three of number variables based on the block's coordinates. This is, uh, allows us to set up um, basically a world event so we can target the furnace block in the GUI. It kind of is a workaround for server sides, client side system, but uh, needs a block in order to right click. So it's just linking up all the GUIs and making sure the right click was all set up. And I was uh, then setting up the um, Oh, what was it? The uh, slots down here so hoppers don't actually take out of the crafting slots or the output slot. Uh, so it would the crafting mechanics would be properly set up. Uh, and then finally, uh, this procedure here it has to do with the recipes. So basically there's uh, different directions and all that other stuff. And then there's this part there's down there at the bottom basically uh, sets the output uh, thing and it's all controlled by a config file so we'll get into that in a little bit the config file but uh, basically what that does is it allows us to get the block from the world location and then it gets it puts a icon up if the crafting recipe is correct in the kiln there's a lot of script that goes on into that little part and there's a few other additional parts but um, basically this that particular procedure handles the uh, crafting recipe and this one uh, this one has to do with I believe the uh, replacing the slot uh, or the blocks in the when you pull out of the inventory out of the output slot it's supposed to remove the blocks in the kiln so it basically crafts that up so basically what it's going to do is it's going to remove all that I did have to set up the rotations manually because I forgot to do the northeast or the southeast or east south and west direction for the kiln but uh, the other procedure that you saw the purple blocks in were the file manager that allows me to uh, generate the default recipe for the quicklime and basically I'm just importing that I had to import the um, main object and the sub object uh, file but then I was just updating the actual uh, system for the registries and namespaces so I was getting it from the the mod itself and I was just setting up the icon and the output item and that's what I'm currently working on right now getting the registry for that. Uh, I left it at 27 slots because that's about how many blocks are in the uh, kiln when it's filled up. So the other thing that I'm working on here is just basically updating the furnace. This will control if the furnace is on or off when the button is pushed, uh, the image button. So, and then we have to set up a couple other procedures, uh, one for setting the, um, I believe there was a conditional one for, uh, yeah, and then I ended up forgetting to relink the inventory, so that's why it was giving me an error. Uh, but the other thing that I needed to work on was the image conditions for displaying the furnace on and off. So that's basically what these two procedures are for right here. And then finally, what I needed to do was test it in game. There was uh, some stuff that I did come across in game that was not exactly working properly. Uh, for example, the um, I think it was the west direction that um, wasn't actually uh, displaying the right recipe locations and stuff like that. I ended up fixing it because the, one of the coordinates were off. That was on uh, me when I designed it. So this is basically the recipe, what it looks like. If you wanted to add another one, you would just add a comma and then set the ID and then you would basically go ahead and um, put in your registry and block 
uh, location like the uh, registry and namespace and then you would be able to craft up custom things based on the config file so this is the kiln uh, this has already been placed down uh, there has I did replace one of the ladders because it wasn't working properly but um, basically it's a um, 5x5 five five kiln area and it allows you to get up and into the kiln and uh, we will basically test this out in just a second so if you were break it that again that stair block was or ladder block wasn't uh, placed there properly uh, because I was trying to fix something but if we break it and then it drops the kiln block and then if we place it again we'll place it on this axis so it will rotate the kiln this way and we can go ahead and grab some coal and then we'll go ahead and grab our quick lime or our limestone or cobbled limestone that's what i'm looking for uh which is right here so we'll go ahead and fill this up with the recipe that i set up so basically the first layer is going to be uh coal and then the bottom layer will be uh the cobbles or the uh lime cobbled cobbled limestone so Basically, we'll do a layer of that, and then we have to fill it up like this. And what this will do is it will create a recipe. So it's basically like a crafting table, but it's um, a volume-based one, I guess. <laughs> so as you can see here, uh, we got a recipe. This is the west direction that I had problems with, so I ended up fixing that. Um, I ended up cutting back in uh, after I tweaked some of the code. And it took me a while to figure out what was going on because I thought it maybe it was a syncing issue or something like that. But uh, I then tested the directions for the other rotations and they were working just fine. So I knew that it wasn't uh, specifically um, due to the way that I had it set up. It was due to something in the west direction. So I was just basically testing out the other ones and there we go, we got the recipe set up. So we can basically do that for the north and, or south and west direction or east direction. So this is the east one. And I just wanted to make sure that it was working. And I basically filled it up to the rim. And maybe in the future what we'll do is we'll work on the um, mechanics for uh, basically replacing the blocks instead in the actual kiln itself rather than you know uh, give you items but I'm not sure if we really need to do that because we're already crafting it like this so I'm not sure if it's going to be able to do that it might require a little bit more mechanics but uh, this is pretty much the point where I came back in and tried to uh, fix the the recipe I think or I might have already done that already but um, yeah basically that's the kiln I wanted to uh, basically get some connected textures set up uh, based on script but I need to learn that or I would have probably done that already but um, I need to figure out a few things on the mechanics on how to basically design it we'll probably end up playing around with the uh, textures and stuff like that and designing some extra ones for me to experiment with and then we'll be able to bring that into the kiln at a later date but um, as you can see basically I'm trying to place it on bedrock and because the bottom of the kiln it removes underneath it basically won't place it on bedrock directly but if you place it one block above it will so uh, it also works with the kiln blocks as well so it basically prevents um, players from getting through the bedrock and stuff like that so it has to have a blo certain blocks that it will allow it to uh, break so basically we can craft up these and what we can do is as you can see it emptied out the kiln fall into the kiln it, this is why we have the ladder here too so we can get back out um, once we craft things or if we need to remove things and we can remove the kiln and it will remove all the blocks in that group and if the kilns were right next to each other they wouldn't remove each other because they're it's re targeting a mbt tag uh, of that particular block so it's really important for it to do that and this one has some in it as well 
So we'll take that and we can break this one. And that's pretty much it. Um, outside of that, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.